Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 50 episodes made, broadcast on NBC Radio from 1950 to 1951, we bring to you Dimension X. Adventures in time and space, told in future tense. Dimension X. When man first crossed the vast distances of outer space to land on strange worlds, he found that someone had been there before him. The ruined canals of Mars, the smashed cities of Titan and Centaurus II and III, all these were evidence that 100,000 years ago, a race of intelligent beings built their cities across the galaxy. They knew space travel, Atomic power, astrophysics, and engineering. And then they destroyed themselves. Completely. So that of all the cities on a thousand worlds, only dust and rubble remained. Why? Why did these beings obliterate all record of themselves? That is the mystery of the lost race. <laughs> The freighter Carilia, bound out of Earth for Cetus Alpha 2, came into normal flight after 103 days in overdrive. The stars were unfamiliar. The constellations known on Earth had disappeared. But there was a yellow sun off to port, and about it revolved three planets. What do you make of it, Briggs? It isn't on any of the star charts, Captain Wharton. I checked through. One and three are dead, all right. Have to take a closer look at number two. Turn up the vision scale. Ice caps. She's green around the belt. Let's take her down to a five mile orbit. Swing around her for a look. Alert for deceleration. Aye, sir. Throw in the manuals. Power room. Power room, aye. We're going down to have a look at something. Give us just enough power to keep her under control. All right, Briggs. Hang on to your stomach. Sent for me, Captain Morton. Come in, Mr. Al. I... Do you mind if I sit down? Free fall sickness? Well, I'm afraid I'm not an old space hand. Oof. We'll level out in a minute. Do you want something? Yes. We come out of overdrive, smack in the middle of a new planetary system. Briggs says it's unreported. Well, that's rather good news, isn't it? Depends. Press report's pretty common. But we'll stake a claim on her in case there are any mineral discoveries. Well, oh, I meant the possibility of archaeological finds. I'm afraid I'll leave that to you, Mr. Howell. You're the expert. Coming up five, Captain. Level off. Hang on, Howell. Power room. Hold her steady, she goes. We'll orbit at slow cruising speed. All right. Clear the scope, Briggs. Aye, sir. Hmm, nice-looking piece of real estate. Well, the space guard requires I check up for radioactives, gold, and lost race rooms. You're landing? Landing. I've got a schedule to keep, Mr. Howell. I can't sit down on every lump of dirt I run into. We'll do a spectroscope check, and I figured you'd spot any ruins. All right. Wait a minute. Hmm? There in the lower quadrant. What? That bald spot in the vegetation. Those are ruins, all right. Are you sure, Howell? Yes. I've seen the lost race rubble on Centaurus, too. There. You can see it plainly, dust and rubble. No, that's what I get for calling in an expert. Briggs, stand by to take it down to 5,000 feet. Aye, sir. All this thinking luck. There goes my schedule. <laughs> Seen enough, Howell? This is going to set me back five hours. Interesting. Wait a minute. What's wrong? Believe it. Marvelous. 
Incredible. Stop sputtering how what is it? Look over that rise in the ground. It's hmm? a section of the city still standing. Hey, you're right. That hill must have shielded it from the blast. Captain, you've got to land. Land? You've got to. This is the first lost ray site that's ever been spotted. Of course, you'll land. Howell, we get a thousand dollar bonus for every day under par for the run. But you don't understand. It's the biggest find in the century. We can chart it, and you'll have to get back somehow. But... That's all. I'm not sitting down to rake over old dust heaps. Captain Wharton, I'm on commission to the Space Guard. You may have to answer to them. I'll think up one. Look, Howell, strictly speaking, you're a passenger. Well, you've got you to land. You don't belong in the bridge. I'm not landing down there. I'm not... Freaks! Emergency from the power room. Something must have blown. Power room. Power room. Stanton, what's wrong down there? Stanton! He doesn't answer. Anything serious, Captain? He reaches the fuel locker. That five pounds of ascending will go and kick us right out of space. Stanton! Stanton! Power room, I. What happened? What blew? The main tube coupling. She's secured now. What's the damage? The main tube's burnt out. The bearing, the coupling... Injector valve and the needle gauge. Can you make repairs? Not in flight. Can you raise enough power to land? I don't know, Captain. The wiring shot. It's flat like a tomcat. I might be able to get something from the deceleration auxiliaries. Get a jury rig on her. We'll try to set her down. Aye, sir. Briggs. Yes, sir. Alert for crash landing. <laughs> Signal room. Signal room. Signal, aye. Langston, get off a position fix and SOS standby. Aye, sir. Well, Mr. Howell... I guess you're going to join your friends in the lost race. I just hope it's not permanently. <laughs> Leveled off now, Captain. Turn her up a point. That's it. She's bucking bad. Five more minutes and the whole plates will shake loose. Power room. Stand by for bar blast on signal. All ready. Try for that clearing. Too narrow. Two to one for a dollar. All right. Hang on. Briggs! Briggs! Oh, you oh. all right? I hit my head on the panel. Well, uh, I seem to be all, all assembled. Uh, we're down. Guess our luck hasn't run out yet. Calling power room. Power room, I. All right down there? Yeah, I'm all right. Stanton, I want a complete damage check and repair estimate. Get up here as soon as you got it for me. Briggs, you all right now? Yes, sir, I guess so. As soon as we get Dan's report, get a detail aft, help him with repairs. Captain Wharton. What is it, Langston? My speaker line's out. Sending circuit's blue. Spare tubes? Uh, that was a pretty rough landing, Captain. They're gone. I can't replace them this side of Luna Space Station. I see. Well, the SOS ought to do it. And the Space Guard monitor reports up They aren't with... going to, Captain. Why not? Sending circuits went out when the blast went off down there. I didn't get the SOS out. Thank you, Langston. Get back and see what you can salvage. Does that mean bad news? We were in overdrive, Mr. Howell. It would take 40 years to search the distance we've traveled in one day. Consequently, when the ship doesn't make port... And doesn't transmit a position fix. They forget about it. Oh. I see. And with the radio out, we blast off on our own power. Or we don't get off. Got your damage report, Captain. Well? Here. It's on a B-23 checklist. Mm. Not bad? Worse. Then, uh, how long will it take you for repairs? I don't know. An estimate. I know gypsy fortune teller. How about the lifeboat? For deep space? What are they teaching at Sands Point now? Basket weaving? Damp lifeboat I... couldn't lift half a light year off this here mud heap. Damp, I'll take just so much. Look. Can it be converted to Bessendium Drive? The converter links were mashed when we came down. How long is it going to take you to repair the main drive? Look, Captain, I got two hands. You want me to hold a lug wrench in my teeth? See here, Denton. You see here, Captain. The whole lousy crew's been spitting all over me ever since we blasted off. Now you can all wait on me. Who do you think you are, Denton? The only power man on this ship, that's who. You ain't satisfied with the way I'm working, go hire yourself another boy. The woods are lousy with him. I'll take my own sweet time. What's the matter with him? Got a bug in his ear? 
space fatigue, Captain. He's been locked up in the power room four days. Well, we don't have enough trouble. Briggs, remind me to slug the psychotechnician when we get back. Don't tell me nobody gets into deep space who isn't emotionally stable. What are you going to do about him, Captain? Nothing. Stay off his back. Oh, but you can't. Captain's the only man who can get us out of here. We want to hit the cradle at New York spaceport again. We've got to keep him happy. Captain Wharton, as long as we're landed and we do have to wait for the engines to be fixed, I suppose we can explore the lost race ruins. I'm Look, Mr. To... Howell, I can't spare the men. We are now stuck tight until Danton gets those engines fixed. And if he can't, which is entirely possible, we are stuck, period. Oh, I... Oh. Briggs... I want you to keep a careful eye on the men. Space fatigue is nothing compared to what we might run up against now. Captain Wharton. Captain, I've got it. Is there any circuits? No, uh, no, sir, but I picked up the incoming video band. Well, that's something. Uh, can you get the mail call through? The men could use a little lift right now. Well, the scheduled one-way personals are due at 2330 Greenwich. Good. That ought to help morale. Langston, uh, rig the receiving booth. Aye, sir. Howell, this is a break. Seeing the folks at home... May be enough to keep everybody on an even keel. I know I'll be glad to see that kid of mine. No, no. Yeah. Mr. Langston, get Hanson out of the booth. You wear the glass right off the tube. Ah, take it easy, Williams. Everybody gets three minutes. Hey, Kelly, I bet that dame of yours burned up the circuits, huh? How'd you know it was his girl? You can't tell through the booth. Well, who else would call that eight? What'd you say, mm. Kelly? Oh, nothing. She don't have to. She just stands in front of the pickup tube and... Oh, brother! <laughs> I can just see that. Hey, hey, it's a boy! A boy! Alice had a boy! What? They're gonna show him to me in the circuit tomorrow. Congratulations! Well, that's 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 Who's okay. next, Mr. Langston? Uh, the last call's coming through now on ticker. It's for Williams. Well, wait a minute, Williams. Well, let go of my arm. What happened to my call? Uh, no call today, Dan. You're a liar, Langston. Hey. My girl calls in every scheduled circuit. That must be mine. Let go, Dad. Maybe Janie was busy waiting tables in the lunchroom. What do you know about her, Hanson? You kidding? She's a swell kid. Everybody at New York Spaceport knows her. Yeah, I've yeah. seen you hanging around Jane, too. Now, wait a minute, Dan. Take it easy, Dan. You and Williams made this up between you, didn't you? You're going to take my call, huh, William? You're space happy. You used to hang around with her before I cut you out. Listen, Denton, you were lucky enough to get her. Let well enough alone. You bet I got her, all right, and you're not going to steal her back. Williams, I'm going to... Are you crazy? Denton, get him off! You're lying. Get him oh, off! Hey, what's, what's you... going on in here? Let him fight! I'm going to kill you, you double-crushing... Let him fight! Let him back! Grab him, Hanson. Get his Let's arm. Let go of me. Nobody took your call. Now, calm down, Denton. Denton. I'll fix all Look you. out. He's got a wrench. <laughs> Denton! He's nuts! Ah, nobody gets a call. Nobody. How do you like that, Williams? You ain't gonna hear from Janie no more. How do you like that? After him. Kelly. Hanson. The airlock. He's left the ship. Let him go, the jealous screwball. Sure. But that's the only man who can get us off of here. I warned you, so help me, Briggs. I warned you to keep an eye on Damp. Well, I didn't think he'd go off this way. Well, it's that girl of his, sir. He's crazy jealous about her. Any reason for it, Williams? No, sir. She's a good kid. Too good for Danton. I guess he's just so afraid of losing her to some other guy, he, he's getting psychopathic about it. Well, we've got to get him back. I want every man equipped and ready for search parties immediately. Aye, right, sir. Williams, rig some portable searchlights and issue hand blasters and radiation tickers. Kelly. Aye, right, sir. You had the second party. If you find Danton, send up a signal flare. Aye, sir. Unless we do find him, we'll be on this planet until the next freighter stumbles on us. Maybe 10,000 years from now. Hold that light up, Hanson. This is amazing. Captain Lost Ray's building's actually standing. Hey! What is it? Oh, it's nothing. It's shadow. This place gives me the willies to be able to find out so much about them. Their science, art, what they looked like, perhaps even why they destroyed themselves. I'm beginning to wonder about that, Howell. You sure they destroyed themselves? Maybe they lost a war to another race. Uh, the winners would have left traces. Genghis Khan, the Mongol emperor, left a pile of skulls as a monument. 
after he destroyed his enemies. But there's been nothing like that found. No clues at all, Nothing. Eh? When they decided to wipe themselves out, they did a thorough job. But why? That's what we've been asking for 50 years. They wanted to end like that. Captain, there's a rise ahead. Keep going. Anything on your side, Briggs? No, sir. Hanson, what is it? I don't know, sir. It's a funny kind of a glow. I guess I shot without thinking. Don't get trigger happy. Howell. Yes? Where do you think the light is coming from? Down there. It's an amphitheater. Stone seats and a hood. It looks like a band shell. What's up, Captain? Wait a minute. Well, Howell? I don't know. That's the lost race sign on the hood. A what? A sort of hieroglyphic. The only thing we'd ever found before. One in each ruin. What does it mean? Some kind of a warning, I think. Come on. We're going down there. Careful now. There's a platform of some kind down there. Looks like a lecture platform, doesn't it? Or an altar. This might have been a temple. Perhaps the lost race sign had a religious significance. It looks like a throne to me. A throne five feet high. Briggs, climb up there. And see if there are any controls for this machinery. Hi, sir. This wasn't meant for any man to sit on. There's a lever up here. Shall I try it? Sure, go ahead. Hey, what the... What's that mist? Like a steam bath. I wonder if Kelly and Williams ran into hey, anything Kelly, like... hold that light up. Shut up and keep looking for Danton. What? Look there. In the hood. It's Williams and Kelly. That crazy jet jockey. When I find Wait, him, I'm going to beat his brains out. You could see him. A three-dimensional image. Some kind of television. Get down, Briggs. Hi, sir. Did you see it, Skipper? I was just thinking about him, and there he was. And we all saw it. Out of the way. I'm going to try it. This thing can pick up Earth. It'll replace the receiver. Danton smashed. Just throw the lever, eh? What? That's my son. I'll be darned. His music lesson. Say, it reaches Earth, all right. What? Imagine. Television without a transmitter. Looks like the lost race was ahead of us in more ways than one. Go up and try it, Howell. It's amazing, amazing. Television without a transmitter. This this machine may be the clue to the mystery of the lost race. I'll try it. Mary, I've told you I like my paper first in the morning. Oh. If that youngster wants to know how the tigers did, let him wait until I am... My father in Detroit... Remarkable, Captain. You can see the whole room clearly. Say, how about me, Captain? Let me get up there. I'd like to see my baby. Alice told me all about it. Ouch! What's the matter, Hanson? I kicked something. A wrench. Well, hold it up. What? It's Danton's. That means he's been here. We're on his trail, all right. Come on, Hal. Let's go. But the baby wouldn't take a minute, Captain. Later, Hanson. We've got to find Danton first. All right, now. Let's get moving. Hold it. What's that? The recall flare. Kelly and his men have found Danton. Oh, I hope that crazy fool is in one piece. We start back now, Captain. Yes. That came from the ship. Another flare? No, that was an explosion. That's all we need now. Something more to happen to the ship. Oh, it's the main jets. Smashed flat. Of all the stinking rot... Check through the ship for further damage. Aye, sir. Oh, look at those plates. Crumpled like an accordion. Captain! Oh, Captain! Here comes Kelly's party. We got him. We got Danton. Hold it. What happened here? Somebody blew up the main jets. Danton, do you know anything about this? No, sir. Not much, he doesn't. He's crazy enough to blow us all up. Listen, Hanson, I admit I went off my head tonight, but I'm not crazy enough to commit suicide. The jets are smashed. We're all marooned up the same creek. I still think he's got something to do with it. Lay off, Hanson. We found him wandering up in the hills. And he was with us when the blast went off. Yes, that's right. We saw your recall flare before the explosions. Oh, I guess that puts Stanton on the clear. Well, then who did it, Captain? I don't know, how. Looks like somebody didn't want us to leave this planet. Well, we still got one slim chance left. If we can repair the lifeboat... Skipper, it's gone. Gone? The escape port is open. The boat's missing. 
Oh, what else? The arms chest was cleaned out, sir, and the fuel locker was jimmied open. The sendium bars are gone. You sure? You can look for yourself, sir. She's clean. I see. There's only one answer left. There's something or somebody out in those ruins trying to get us. Maybe that lost race decided they weren't going to stay lost. You think some of them may, may still be alive? Who else could have blown up our ship? Keep your blaster up, Hal. And be careful. It's a hair trigger. What are we doing back at the television machine, Captain? I thought we were looking for the lifeboat. We are. Whoever blew up the ship must be around here. Might as well try to use the machine to track them down. Yeah. Yeah, catch them with their own gadget, huh? That's right. All right, Hal, you're the expert. Get up there and try to find them. I hope it works. Well? I'm trying, Captain. Nothing but mist. I don't understand it. It reached all the way to Earth before I saw my father in Detroit. Mary, my papers all rumbled again. What? There it is again. My father in Detroit. I've told him time and time again, I don't like a messy paper. Look at that. No selector control, yet all the way to Earth. You can see the whole room, the goldfish bowl, the, the antimacassars on the chairs. And yet we can't pick up something less than a mile away. Knock it off, Hal. We're wasting time. <laughs> Come on. That gadget won't work. We'll have to comb these rooms inch by inch. I don't understand. Neither do I. Cut behind the hood here and go on. Briggs, you take the lead with the radiation ticker. We might be able to pick up a reading on where the rocket fuel is hidden. Aye, sir. All right, let's go. I can't understand why that machine can pick up earth and not... Help, help, Captain! Briggs, what is it? Captain, help! I'm falling! It's a cave-in. Hang on, Briggs. I'm slipping, Captain. Grab his wrist. All right. Now Got pull. Him. Pull. Uh, higher. Higher. Uh, higher. Oh. What happened? I was just walking along and the ground caved in. What? It's some kind of shaft. Hold your light over it, Captain. Oh! Fifty feet deep in a stone bottom. I could have split my head open like a grapefruit. Something down there. Hold that light steady. Amazing. Amazing. Looks like a pile of bones to me. Two piles. They may be the first skeletal remains ever found of the lost race. I've got to get down in there. We haven't got time, Howell. Come on. Let me have your binoculars. Wonderful. That small skeleton must be an infant. They've been laid out carefully at the burial chamber. The way they're lying, it's probably a mother and infant. Yeah. The tail. She's definitely anthropoid. Howell, you... You mean apes? Something like that. Yet they had atomic power and built cities across the galaxy. Amazing. Oh, we haven't got time. Hello, that's funny. The, the little one is different. The, the caudal bones are different. No tail. Listen, Hal. What do I care whether they had tails or not? Come on now. It's almost as if... Well, they, they, they did have atomics and radiation does funny things to heredity. They had that problem of mutations in Detroit. What? Detroit? That must be it. What? The new atomics plant at Detroit. They tore down my father's house to make room for it. Quickly, Captain. Oh, where are you going? Back to the machine. I've got a theory that may solve the whole mystery of what happened to the lost race. I don't care what happened to the dead ones, Hal. I want to find the living ones who wrecked my ship. I think this machine may give us both answers. There's the house, Detroit, down to the last detail. Oh, come on down. We know all but that. But don't you understand? That house was torn down. I got a letter before we lifted off Earth. It's gone. But it's on the television machine. Captain, that machine isn't television. It's a thought projector. What? It only mirrors what's in your own mind. But, Mr. Howell, we saw Earth. It was really there. But it was just because we imagined it, Briggs. It's a thought projection. I can produce any mental image that occurs to me on this machine. New York spaceport, a space guard patrol, anything. Anything? Yes. And now I think I know what inspired the lost race to do what they did. It was fear. Fear of what was in their own minds. They could all see it with machines like this. But fear? Fear of what? They foresaw the future. So they destroyed themselves. Every last one of them. All it, how. Are you sure they're all dead? 100,000 years ago. Then who blew up the ship and stole our lifeboat? Danton. Danton? 
But why? He was pathologically jealous. Yes, but blowing up the ship was like committing suicide. He wasn't crazy enough to do that. The lost race was after they looked at this machine. You mean Danton did too? We found his wrench here. You're right. He must have looked at the machine and thought it was television. He must have seen all his fears about losing his girl confirmed. That was enough to make him completely unbalanced. But he was with Kelly when that explosion went off. He's got an ironclad alibi. No, he hasn't. It wouldn't take a power man long to sneak back to the ship and rig a delayed action fuse. Howell, we've got to get back to the ship before Danton. Never mind, Captain. Stay right there. That's Danton. In the dark. You make a perfect target there. Stop your gun. I got a blaster set at wide angle. Drop him. He's got his cold. I've been following you, Warden. I wanted to tell you, I'm going back to Earth. I got the lifeboat hidden over that rise. It won't work in deep space. <laughs> you believe me when I told you that, didn't you? Well, I've got it fixed. And with that bisendium fuel, it'll be a milk run. I'll reach the space guard station at Volta with a long, sad story about how the rest of you exploded in mid-space. Danton, that's murder. Yeah, yeah, that's just what it is. And easy, too. Danton, you can't just leave us here. Watch me. Sit in front of that machine and watch me. Yeah, I know what it is. I know it's a television without a transmitter. And I did some checking up. I've seen how you were stealing my call. Trying to steal my girl. Danton, you're sick. You Pretty can't... Pretty smart, bust... that lost race. They built some machine. And it showed me plenty. It showed me enough to kill you. Oh, you've got it all wrong. This isn't a television machine. What are you trying to pull, Warden? I saw it. Those were your own thoughts, Danton. Those things you saw exist only in your mind. Shut up before I blast all of you down. You're just trying to lie out of it, that's all. But I know the truth when I see it. And you're going to die. All right, Danton, but you're not going to get away with it. Look at the machine. What's that? The machine. It's the space guard patrol, Danton. Look, they're coming. X-3 to command. Spotted the Corellias reported. Preparing to land. That's the space guard, Danton. Yeah, whole patrol. You're lying, you're lying. They couldn't come. There wasn't any SOS. X-3 to command. Preparing to land. There's a clearing. That's enough, Howell. All right, Danton. They'll be coming over the horizon. Drop your gun and give yourself up. No, no. No, they're not going to catch me. I'll be away in that lifeboat before they land. Stand still, all of you. Stay where you are. I Danton. still got you covered. Danton, look out behind you. Ah! Burial shaft. He fell in it. Hold the light down, Briggs. Well? He's dead. Deader than the lost race. And what about those space guard cruisers? Out of my head. I just imagined them. There they were on the machine. Poor Danton believed they were real. I wish they were real so we could get off this planet. No, it doesn't matter. We know where the lifeboat is now. We can send one man to bring back help. And it won't be Danton. The machine got him the same way it got the lost race. Through fear. But what was the... Lost race, afraid of how? Changing. Changing? Look at those skeletons down there. They had atomic energy, but they couldn't control it. Look, the baby is different from the other. The race was changing by mutation. Mutation? Look at those skeletons. Now imagine a shifted hip socket so they could walk upright. The baby was already without a tail. But how... That would mean they were changing into... into... Yes, Captain. The lost race committed suicide rather than face the fear of seeing their descendants become such horrible creatures as men. You have just heard another adventure into the unknown world of the future. The world of... Dimension X. And now, about next week. William Travis and his wife thought they had escaped. But they were wrong. They were being searched out by men from another world. Men who wanted them to return. Where? I'll tell you next week. Tonight's drama was based on the Murray Leinster story The Lost and was adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. Featured in the cast were Matt Crowley as Captain Wharton, 
Roger DeCoven as Howell and Joseph Julian as Danton. Your host was Norman Rose. Tomorrow, it's Sam Spade. Now hear Truth or Consequences on NBC. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.